Bill Stubblefield, two star. Good morning, Rob. I thought about walking all the way in this morning, just enjoy the rain, but I had to get up at the same time you get up, and I was not <laughs> going to do that. I, you know, how long would it take you to walk? A long time. From your house, your <laughs> compound. It, it would have to be about two hours just to walk out of the compound. With all the alligators. All the yeah. alligators, the moat, the guards, the, dra- yeah, the right, drawbridge, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Never thought about it, Rob. It's, too, it's a frightening thought. A lot of security <laughs> there. So Got to be something to get and, through all that. And Dale don't believe a thing he says. Dale believe it all. It's all true, Dale. I believe it all. It's all factual. All I, factual I've information. I've never had anyone over here in the Eastern Panhandle lie to me, <laughs> See? so it has to be true. <laughs> Uh, Maria Lawrenson is out today, so uh, the other half and of we the miss Bill her. Maria team is not here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you hear uh, the voice there, and welcome in our guests on the program. He is the president of the WBEA, Dale Lee. Good morning, Dale. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Rob. And his legal counsel, bodyguard, and security, Lisa Henry. Good, Good morning, driver. Lisa. Driver. <laughs> That is true. Good morning. It's all true. You know it is. We don't tell lies on this program. Dale just said nobody in the Eastern Panhandle lies. That's right. That's right. It's all factual. What brings you to town this morning, sir? Well, we had a regional meeting last night at uh, James Rumsey to discuss the merger and, and to let people know where we are in the process, how far we're going along, given the information that we've agreed upon at this point, uh, given the timetables for where we proceed for the rest of this year and, and just to answer questions that people may have. What were some of the questions that they had? Well, have? you know, all the questions revolve around uh, how's this going to affect the locals when you have two organizations in a county, mm-hmm. uh, what, what do we need to do? How's it going to affect us on the state level? How do we uh, uh, get a transition team to, to go in for the – beginning of the the merger organization big question everybody wants to know what's the name going to be i don't know we don't know that yet we're going to do some polling and and have uh, a research group do the polling and figure out what's the best strategy for us to to move forward and and what will entice people to to want to belong to a new organization we know we do some things well aft does some things well we also know we do some things because we've always done them Mm -hmm. that that really doesn't make sense anymore so this is an opportunity to begin new and and do things to get more people involved and more members involved and to do things some some strategies and some some uh, staff developments for people that that will get them excited and, and want to belong did your membership numbers suffer when there was the legislative change regarding the deduction of the dues from the paychecks oh all all membership all union memberships suffer in in that type of thing uh, was it significant as, it, it, we did better in west virginia than than other states have done that have lost payroll deduction but but even if you lose um a small percentage of your members it, it hurts you in, in in the budget so it this is this is an opportunity for us to discuss together and, and form a, a stronger group, a stronger voice, because we're not fighting each other for members all the time. We're, we're looking at uh, ways to in, bring in the non-members and, and make it better for them. Do you have an idea what percentage of teachers belong to either of the two associations, or are they unions or associations in West Virginia? Well, we're an association. AFT is a union. Uh, the the definition of association and union my my late friend jim bowen who was president of afl cio for a long time uh, would would tell me all the time if you look at the definitions of association and union in the dictionary it's the exact same thing and so while we are an association by name uh, we we really are a group that's pushing forward the betterment of, of its members and, mm-hmm. and that's really what a union does too so so we'll be that way the the new organization will be a part of the AFL-CIO and uh, uh, so if you want to say we'll be a union we'll we'll be a union if you are a member of the AFL-CIO <coughs> and you're paying union dues do mm-hmm. you kick a separate set of dues up to the AFL-CIO uh, as well they they get a small uh, per member uh, for that, uh, for the umbrella coverage, but there's some benefits to that. There's some, some things that they have that uh, maybe we don't have or, or benefits offered to members that maybe we don't offer. 
and so it's it's a trade off. The when we when we merge, the new organization will actually reap the benefits of both national organizations too. Any any benefits that uh, either national organization has and and member benefits and things like that, you will get the best of both worlds. Is there additional liability coverage? Uh, I mean, mal- Practice. I don't think we have malpractice for <clears throat> teachers, but insurance coverage of some sort. Well, I, the, the the liability will will increase a little bit, not not that significant, but you'll have two different national organizations that mm-hmm. that will be able to to help out, and if we have exorbitant legal costs. Do you release the number? I know you don't release membership numbers, no. but is there is there any release of information as to what percentage of teachers actually belong to either of the two? No, we don't really release that information either. It, it's uh, it's more difficult to to calculate that because the you have so many positions across the state where you have a non-certified person in it or a substitute. And while we do have substitute members, uh, you know you have to calculate all that, and and the the market share continues to drop in West Virginia because we're losing students. Last year we lost 5,000 students across the state. So when you lose 5,000 students based on our funding formula, you lose X number of teachers and service personnel too. So the market share continues to drop. Bill? Yeah. uh, Dale, uh, what's the timing of the merger? Well, we will, um, if everything proceeds as as we plan, uh, we will in march of this coming year uh, we will both of us have our it's for us a delegate assembly it's for aft their convention we'll have it at the same time same place and both of our governing bodies will so sorry about that bill's just happy it wasn't him this time (laughs) first thing i looked at was me (laughs) sorry about that uh glad to have you here That would cost me twenty five dollars at uh, at our delegate assembly. I That's that. right, baby. Well, <laughs> what about here? We, we <laughs> if you didn't bring food in, so I we guess, get money. <laughs> I guess I have to pay twenty five. And, and the funny part about that is, my at delegate assembly we have a fine, a twenty five dollar yeah. fine. And my uh-huh. daughter is a teacher and and is one of our. Uh, delegates yeah. and she'll call me invariably to see if my phone is is on silent <laughs> and it costs me twenty five dollars so she calls me twenty five dollars again here so. uh, but the timeline is in March yeah. we'll, we'll both organizations will meet uh, we'll discuss it and then have a vote on the merger an up or down vote on the merger if, if the vote is positive then we will convene into a, a middle assembly hall and have the very first meeting of the new organization right there. Uh, but for practical purposes, it will go into effect uh, September of 2025. Okay. Is there any possibility at all that it would be uh, it would not get a positive reception? Uh, you obviously have been talking to the members, both all the members, and you have a pretty good sense of what they're going to say. I, I'm I'm pretty confident yeah. that it will it will pass overwhelmingly. But you never know what yeah. what's going to come up. You never know what uh, uh, questions may sure. may arise. Most most people, uh, most of our members want this to happen they don't want us to continue fighting each other sure. they uh, they want to uh, have a stronger voice and and that's what this will provide for us you you also uh, mentioned earlier you're going to do a review mm-hmm. uh i always find it curious someone says they're going to do a review uh is it going to be a hard scrub? Are you going to have a third party? The reason I'm asking this is that there's always a defensive mechanism attached to review. We've all we've done it our way. We want to continue doing it. So how do you get a, get around that? Well, we're we're having we're doing some polling of uh, our members, AFT members, and non-members to to really see one what entices our people to stay in in our organizations and two what would entice non-members what what they would look for in a, in an organization so so this national group will will come in and and do this polling for us and then we'll derive a message from that 
Okay. Uh, Rob asked you a couple minutes ago about the percentages, and you were you deflected his answers. Let me ask you. I'm pretty good at that. Yeah, you are pretty good at that. Let me try it a different way. Uh, The membership, are they one half the teachers? One half the Uh, teachers? More than that. More than that. Okay. Yeah. That's about as far as you're going to let me go, that's, is it? That's about as far as I'll let you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bill, keep working up those fractions. I, I'm, I'm keeping, yeah. I have to be careful, Rob. I get confused with fractions. See, see I'm a math teacher, so I, I'm very Got careful. Got the upper hand. Okay. That's, uh, that's one of the things I tell people at these meetings. Uh, the, the vote will be up or down. It won't yeah. be wordsmithing because, yeah. like I said, I'm a math teacher. Uh, English people, God bless them. They will argue forever over whether there should be an Oxford comma there or, mm-hmm. or not and things like that. If we did that, we wouldn't merge until September of 2075. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. so it will be the up or down. Okay. Both national organizations will continue to be involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, your merger is intended trying to reduce the conflict between your current, mm-hmm. your organizations. If you still have the two national organizations involved, aren't you just transferring the 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 competition up up a couple of levels? Well it's not not just the competition, it's it's the strength, the strength in numbers and and the, the more powerful voice. Uh, for a number of years, uh, as long as I've been involved in the association and, and I've been on the executive committee at the state level since 1995 which is far too long uh, but legislatures both Democratic and Republicans would 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 play one side against the other and say well we we would really give you this benefit but the other group wants this and then they go to the other group and say we'd give you this but uh, WBEA wants this so so they play both sides against the other this will give us more power in that you, you can't play one side against the other. We'll, we'll have a united voice going in. I'm, I'm confused. Uh, I can see the advantage you get the benefit from both organizations, but I still think you have the structure in place <clears throat> that you're responding to two national organizations. There would be the opportunity to play one side against the other, or there'd be some internal competition. One national organization would like to go this way, the other one would like to go the other way. Uh, I, I, can, I can see that. Except that as, as a state organization, we will be autonomous, and, and we will decide the direction that we go. Uh, we take, you know, of course we will uh, get national help from both organizations and, and things like that, but, but we make the decisions in West Virginia about what we're going to do. And, and who knows, this may help jumpstart uh, a future merger at the national level. I, I don't know. What I do know is, is there are many southern states that are looking at at this at us because we're the first non-bargaining state to uh, have these merger discussions and the first one that's lost payroll deduction so there are other states that are looking at us and and are interested in in the direction that we're going to go Dale Lee, our guest here, along with Lisa Henry from the WBEA. I think someone else is trying to reach you now. Uh, it's the other daughter. <laughs> <laughs> they might need you. might want to call them yeah, back. Another 25 bucks. We're going to be wealthy for the day. Oh, that one didn't ring on the air, though. I mean, that's so just, I, just I better some vibration. There. Just some vibration. I guess breakfast is on me this morning. Dale, the uh, legislature has passed, uh, I believe they've said, five five percent raises mm-hmm. during the Justice Administration. There was talk of another five percent raise. Uh, in this next budget coming up, but the governor wants a, an additional 5% state income tax cut. And in the interviews that we've done, uh, nobody that I've talked to has said we can do both. Would you prefer to have another 5% raise for the teachers or a 5% personal income tax cut in addition to the 4% trigger that's going to happen one way or the other? Well, let me put it this way. We've, we've gotten the five raises, and we're still 50th in the nation in pay. Mm-hmm. Over here in the Eastern Panhandle, you all can't keep teachers. Uh, you you drive 15 to 30 minutes across the borders and make twenty thousand dollars more. There's a difference in in a in an increase in salary and a small percentage of of the income tax that that you would get back. So, you know, f- to attract people and, and entice them to stay, we have to do something that's going to move those salaries in a positive direction and and there's 
uh, as, as I've said on this before, there's some things we can do uh, in the legislature that will help each individual county and then help statewide. Um, I think uh, uh, Delegate Hornby and, and Delegate Clark are both looking at, at uh, a reduction in the, the local shares that will help over here yeah. quite could you, a bit. Could you explain that and yeah, how that works? And, and what it is is right now uh, – it's a 90-10 split. Where, what is where, a 90-10 split? 90 percent of the tax dollars stay at state, ten percent stay in the county. If you reduce that to 80-20, where 20 percent of the tax dollars then stay over here in the eastern Panhandle, and 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 preface it by saying that that money for the school system has to go into salary and benefits, then you can do the things that you need. You can raise the salaries and get competitive with your surrounding states. Uh, when but it, when but it, it would be in the control of the local school board yes, to do that. Yes, when it decreased from 98% to 90%, I know uh, uh, Berkeley County and, and I think Jefferson County both did things like housing allowances and, and stuff like that. So it, it made it a, an option to get more money in people's pockets and, and, and keep them over here. So so that's a way that, that can pass because every county in the state would benefit from it. Um, rather than a, a, quote, locality pay mm -hmm. where, where just a few would, would benefit. This, so this, uh, uh, this reappropriation would be in lieu of locality pay. Is that what you're suggesting? Uh, it, it would be a way to do locality pay without calling it locality pay and, and give the op opportunity for it to pass. Yeah. Uh, Every time you've been on Dale, locality pay has been discussed. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, and it uh, probably will be until the merger and you've you've gone playing golf with your grandson. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's uh, uh, your arguments uh, do not resonate in the Eastern Panhandle. I, I understand that, but and and what I say is, they have tried locality pay to pass. Uh, the last time was with the state police and and. Uh, uh, Senator Barrett, when he was in the, in the House, tried to do it for the state police and couldn't get it passed. You have to do something that will pass. And, and by calling it locality pay, which will benefit uh, this area greatly, and it's needed. I, I'm not saying that it's not. But the rest of the state does, the, the rest of the delegates and, and senators, it's not going to help their area, so they're not going to pass it. The, the local shares is a way to help everybody, and it has an opportunity to pass. So, so I've never said I'm against locality pay. What I've said is it has no chance to pass by calling it locality pay because you have uh, about 95 other state delegates and, and uh, 32 other senators that, that have to vote on something. If it's not going to help their area, they're not inclined to, to vote on it. The pragmatic approach would yeah. be the locality pay increase. Sure. I'm sorry, not the local share, which yeah. would, if you, you said 80, 80 20, for instance, as an example, gives more control to the local governments. I want to ask you about the future of PEIA. Obviously, there's discussions about privatizing it every uh, now and then that come up. And I know we've got a couple of pretty large increases with PEIA they are mm -hmm. also uh, approaching. Can you discuss that? Well, one of the things that, that the task force that, that I served on in, in 2018 and, and the beginning of 2019, one of the things that we said is that you had to have language in there that said the state shall pay no less than 80 percent and the employee shall pay no more than 20 percent. Right now it's a hard 80-20 split. So any time the, the state puts uh, a dollar in, we have to pay 20 cents of it. Uh, in the premiums and there's no other opportunity for anything except a premium increase by adding the language that says the state shall pay no no less than 80 percent and the employees no more than 20 percent when you have a surplus like we've had over these last five years the state could put the money in and it wouldn't see the premium increases uh, that that are mandated under this strict 80-20 rule. So that's one of the fixes. This, the second fix is, is we know that health insurance continues to be a problem nationwide. It's not just PEIA, it's in the private plans and everything else. We have a, a private plan at WVEA and, and we budget for a, a, at least a 10% increase in, in premiums each year because we know health care costs are going up. If we don't attack that nationally, if we don't attack the prescription drugs particularly, 
and, and the cost of those and, and the health care. There's no real fix to that, but the, the help for us in West Virginia would be that language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, try, you're trying to fight a national problem mm-hmm. within a state, and when you're not addressing it nationally, all you can really do is plug holes in the sure. in the dam and not really fix the problem. That's kind of what we're all facing since the way health insurance works is you're pretty much confined to your state mm-hmm. to, as your options, and mm-hmm. this is what we have. Dale, we're about to run out of time, and Rob generally calls me up short if I ask a question that requires more than 15 seconds. you got three minutes, uh, Bill. Three minutes. Use them wisely. Uh, the, uh, the governor is going to be convening a task force to look at safety in the schools. Mm-hmm. Will you be participating in that task force? I would hope I would be participating in that task force. We, uh, one of the things that's, that's going on, my, my daughters are, are blowing up my phone because there's a, a crisis at, at my daughter's school. There, there's a lockdown at, at my daughter's school. Mm-hmm. So I, I have and to, where is this? In, in, in Mercer County. Mercer County, okay. Uh, so, so uh, you know, we have to address this. We really have to address this. And, and part of addressing it, we've said, the WEA has said for the last few years, is we have to uh, work on the mental and emotional states of these kids and the behavior of these kids. We have to do it in the elementary schools. If we wait until they're in the middle school or the high school, we've lost a lot of them. Uh, so, so there are programs that we had in the early 20 teens that worked, and they were pilot programs, but they stopped funding them. So we know that there's there's ways that it will work. We it, it's a decision on where we're going to put our money, and are we going to spend it on the kids and their mental and emotional health and 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 help them to overcome all the issues that, that the kids face today. And, and for me, that's a no-brainer. I mean, if you can save one kid, it's, it's worth the price. What were those programs, Dale? Well, the program was we would put an alternative setting in the elementary school where that uh, you just didn't send a kid home. You sent them to this alternative setting in the school where they would work on both their behavior and their academics. And what we saw from their five pilot schools, five pilot counties that did that in, in 2011, is we saw academics increase by 74% for those kids, and the behavior issues uh, increase or, or help the behavior inc- issues by 72%. Man, if I can do something that's, that's given those type of, of results, I would want to expand it and keep doing it. Was, even was more. that defunded during the Tomlin era when they it, had some it budget fun, problems? It was funded under the uh, innovation zones, and we stopped doing innovation zones so we could go toward the the charter schools. I see. All right, Dale. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Are you headed anywhere else in the Eastern Panhandle today? Uh, I think we're going to visit a couple schools today, and and then I'm going on to Bridgeport to the the next regional meeting we have there, and and Bridgeport tonight, and Elkins tomorrow night. I hope everything works out with your daughter's school. That uh, sounds yeah, I'm, a little I'm, scary. I need to call that immediately. Yeah. Thank you, Dale. Thank you all. Thanks, Dale. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa. Thank yeah. you.